Okay, I want to do this video uh, basically on Ciguatera fish poisoning. Uh, and you might wonder, well, Tom, what's this got to do with citizenship by investment, residency by investment? Well, the reason I'm showing you this video, I uh, most of you people are, uh, probably do some traveling out there. And if you don't see this video and you get Ciguatera poisoning, you're going to wish you did see the video, okay? And if you do a lot of traveling, uh, and you you eat seafood, you definitely need to listen to this, okay? Because I didn't know about Ciguatera poisoning. Do now, but I'm going through a lot with it, okay? It's not the type of fish poisoning that you're going to have for a couple of days like Scumbroid or one of these others. Uh, there's basically three types. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen with Ciguatera. The other ones I don't know a lot about, but uh, Ciguatera is something that uh, when you get it, you don't get rid of it. Okay. It's, it's not like you go out and get sick, you throw up, get diarrhea and it's gone. It's in your system for life. Now the symptoms can actually leave. I did a lot of investigating on this, but again, if you're traveling, uh, especially to the Caribbean, okay. Uh, the Caribbean and Pacific areas, uh, is where you're going to see a lot of these, uh, 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 Ciguatera toxins that come off the Ciguatera reef. And also, uh, you can get it from uh, seaweed residue, uh, and it's from eating fish that actually go on these reefs and eat from the Ciguatera toxin, which is typically on these reefs, or uh, they will eat or uh, uh, from this uh, seaweed, uh, algae, that you can actually get it from. Uh, and it, everything I'm telling you, I'm not a doctor, okay? Everybody knows me, I'm not a doctor, so... Uh, you can do your own research on this. I'm going to tell you what happened to me, and then you can make your decisions from there. Uh, but uh, like I said, it's something that once you get it, you don't get rid of it, okay? And this is why I'm doing the video. And even when I went to see my doctor on this, she started bringing up botulism right away, and I said, oh, crap, she didn't even know what it is. And uh, this is why I'm bringing out the, uh, this thing on, on Ciguatera. Okay, let, let me just explain to you uh, a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I'm, I was very hesitant with seafood because of all the things I've seen in the past with PCPs. You got uh, you got mercury, all kinds of problems you can get from eating a lot of seafood. And uh, uh, and I heard of this poison that barracudas got. Okay, the the big barracudas. Okay, and but I didn't do much checking and stuff. I mean, this is probably the third time I've had food poison in my life. Uh, and it's always been from meat. I never get it from vegetables. I always get it from meat. But this one doesn't leave you, okay? So if you get this, it's in your system for life, okay? The symptoms can take months or years to go away. I'm going through it now, okay? And this is why I want to bring this out to you. Okay, first of all, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I steered away. I, I got this from eating a, uh, a fish. Uh, it was a snapper at, at the fisheries uh, in St. Kitts, Okay. One of the reasons I went there to get fish is, um, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of this stuff about the uh, the fish that are brought up in these uh, uh, in these you know cribs, uh, fish farming is what I'm trying to say, and the feeding stuff and the, they swim their own feces. There's all kinds of crap that's you know you can get from that. Uh, and now it's uh, they're they're coming out with more and more on these fish farms. The problem is when you go to the store, a lot of these stores, tilapia. I mean, you can go through all the types of fish, salmon. So many of these fish now are brought up in fish farms. And if you go on the internet, you'll also see where salmon now is, can be the most toxic food on the planet. Okay, so I was trying to get away from this. Okay, I wanted to get fish that was not fish farms. I wanted to get fish that were way out. Okay. And when I went down there, I asked them, I said, are these fish brought up in fish farms or are they caught out? They catch them out in the ocean uh, away from the fish farms. And she said, no, they, they catch them way out. Uh, so I, I got fish maybe there six or eight times. I can't remember the exact count. And one day I went in there and I saw this big fish and he was the only one that was actually in there. He was all by himself. And I said, huh, that's, I don't think I want to get him, huh? I started just to go back, but I, I said, you got anything in, the, anything in the freezer? And so I went in and got some fish that was in there. And uh, it was tuna, mahi-mahi, 
uh, snapper. Uh, I forgot the other fish that might have been in there. But what happened was when I got the, the fish, I started to, uh, I started looking at it. And one of them was snapper. I said, God, this doesn't look like snapper. This looks like a steak fish. I mean, it's, uh, I always envisioned snapper as being kind of a flaky type fish. That's why so many people like it. It's a lot higher. I went ahead and got it, went home, started uh, fixing it. And uh, what happened was probably maybe my, my time is not really, really great. Maybe about an hour after I started eating it, I had this really weird feeling. Uh, all of a sudden, it's like this wave, heat wave started from my head. It went all the way down my body. It was the weirdest feeling. All of a sudden, I started getting real hot and my heart started beating really fast. I said, God, I think I'm going to have a heart attack. I had no idea what this was. And you know, the thing is, I'm in really good health and I just couldn't imagine what this was. And it lasted maybe about 30 seconds and then it went away. Well, uh, maybe just a few minutes after that, I started getting this like uh, my, uh, something's wrong with my stomach. Making a long story short, I had the worst diarrhea I've ever had in my life. It was really bad. I mean, I literally had to get on Tylenol because my rectum was like on fire. And never had this, this bad before. And didn't throw up. When I went on the internet, did a lot of research, most people throw up from it and throw up and have diarrhea. I rarely ever throw up. I mean, I, I didn't remember the last time I threw up. I've got to be really bad off to throw up. For some reason, my system just set up that way. But um, I ended up, uh, uh, after that happened, uh, I was so incredibly weak. Uh, so I went back and I talked to the manager. I said, look, there's something really wrong with this fish. I got really sick. And But one thing, I right before I went to see him, um, you know, I, I was really weak. And, and, and then let me press forward. After I went to see him, I went to see him. Uh, I told him I was on the way to the hospital. I said, I'm really incredibly weak. And I went to the hospital. She immediately put me on IVs. She said, your blood pressure is really low. And my blood pressure is, you know, uh, usually really good. Uh, but she said, and we're going to put you on IVs. And uh, I started feeling a little bit better. But when I went back, uh, I'll tell you the symptoms you get when you get this. OK, uh, you get what's called chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, I got the point I could not I literally could not even wash dishes. I mean, it was that bad. I mean, I was hanging over and I'm used to going out swimming a mile in the ocean and hiking down the ocean, which is about a, an hour there and back and then swimming for about a mile. And I couldn't even I, it was hard for me to even wash the dishes. OK, so I, I never had this before where I got this tired. And usually if you get like this, the next day you're okay. It wasn't that way. Next day, same way. Next day, same way. Next day, it was not going away. And what happened was I noticed the right after I went to the fisheries and took the fish back, I, uh, he told me, I didn't pick up on what he said. He said, uh, he told me he, he, that I had cigarettera. I didn't pick up that. I didn't know what cigarette was. Maybe that's why I didn't pick up on it. I thought I had scumbroid because when I came back from the hospital, I, I looked up uh, and, and scumbroid was everywhere. But 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 after I came back from the hospital, I noticed this doesn't happen right away. Once the, the you got to remember too, cigarette poisoning, it's a neurotoxin. OK, uh, neurotoxins can be you can die from it. Very few people do die from cigarette but you can die from it, okay, which I can understand. I felt like just taking a gun and blowing my head off. I felt so bad. I mean, I was I was miserable, and I, Tylenol, not Tylenol, uh, ibuprofen, I, I was really, I hate taking drugs, but I ended up taking that because uh, the pain, what happens is your whole body goes into an ache state, and it also depends on the amount of cigarette poison you get in your system, okay? But I'm going to tell you some things that can help uh, if you absolutely are not going to uh, lay off seafood, s several things I'll tell you to, to do. Number one, do not eat seafood. Listen to me. In the Caribbean, okay? Now, I've never had this problem going to the stores, okay? I'm 70 years old, never had a problem going to the stores, getting fish. It's when I went and started getting local fish here locally. 
And I had gotten something similar to this back around two years ago, right when I came back from the Philippines. And I think it was from getting my fish again at that point, but it wasn't, as, it wasn't like this at all. I had real bad hives, uh, histamine problems and stuff like that. It was from eating fish. But uh, uh, anyway, to make a long story short, trying to get this to a head here, uh, if you're gonna absolutely uh, stick with seafood and you don't wanna get off of it, don't eat the fish in the Caribbean, don't eat shellfish in the Caribbean because there's also another poison that also has the same effect as cigarette It's called something else, I forgot the name of it, but the symptoms, uh, in fact, you won't even know that you got this other symptom unless you ate only shellfish, okay? That, that's the only way they can determine the difference is uh, this other poison you get from shellfish, but the effects are the same. But let me tell you what happens when you get this, okay, just so you'll know. The bottom parts of my feet went totally numb. I uh, had no energy at all. And at nighttime, literally, I had uh, the itch and the pain together that you get from this uh, is just almost unbearable. It's, uh, especially on the bottom of your feet, it's just really bad. And, uh, but the, this is the thing that, that stick, sticks with you so long, uh, is the, uh, when you put cold water on you, it feels like it's hot and it's not just hot, it stings, you can't take it. And it, of course, it's gonna deter determine the amount of secretary poison in your system. Now, this is the same sort of uh, stuff you get from barracuda. Uh, but barracuda is not, I didn't eat barracuda, I ate snapper. But there's tons of fish that you can get this from. And don't just go by the list. You can go on the internet, pull it up. I think it's mahi mahi. I think tuna's on there. Uh, you can get it from uh, snapper. It's real bad. Snapper and barracuda. But it's any fish that's fished off, the, that's eaten off this, uh, the reefs that have the cigarette poisoning, Okay. And the reason I'm telling you this is when you get it, like I said, you're not going to get it out of your, your system. Now, the symptoms can take months or years to get rid of, okay? So this is what I'm going through right now. I found out that exercise does help. I force myself to exercise. and uh, uh, But this burning stuff is still there. And there's certain foods, if you get this, uh, caffeine, you definitely don't want to eat any type of seafood. They say for at least six months, uh, caffeine, nuts. I found that eggs wasn't on the list, but eggs, they'll destroy it. Uh, and of course, chocolate's got caffeine in it. Uh, there's a list of foods there you, you literally cannot uh, eat because if you do, all these symptoms come back even like you, you had at the very beginning. And um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's a real ordeal when you get this. And again, like I said, you don't get it. It's in your system for life, okay? So, uh, and when I went to the doctor, it's like the doctor didn't even know what it was when I brought up Cigaterra. Uh, a lot of people that are in the health profession, uh, you would think they would know this, but they don't, okay, about Cigaterra. The guy that really knew the most about this was the manager of the fisheries. I mean, he uh, evidently they had some issues before, and I asked him, I said, you know, I had heard there was some sort of fish poisoning, uh, couple of years back or something down here that occurred. He said, yeah. And I think he said it was cyanide. And they think it's from uh, the dump, the dumping from these ships and stuff where the fish come in and they eat that stuff. Well, you know, you can imagine what they dump in the water and that gets in their meat and then you eat it and you get sick. Uh, I'll tell you one thing I've done is I've literally have cut, I'm not eating any more fish in the, or seafood in the Caribbean, but, uh, uh, the reason I'm telling you this is uh, probably if you eat seafood in the Caribbean, more than likely you won't get this, okay? All right? But if you do get it, you're going to get really pissed off with yourself for eating the food because uh, the seafood because you can't get it out of your system. But another thing, too, I wanted to tell you, too, is if you're, if you're absolutely going to eat seafood in the Caribbean, this is what you need to do. Don't eat any fish that's in a steak form. Make sure you can see the fish, and it's real. The smaller, the better. The bigger the fish is, the more potent the toxin is. And I noticed that snapper I ate was a steak fish. Okay, so uh, 
I'm talking about even if you get it from the grocery store, although I've gotten steak fish for, for years in the grocery store, never had a problem. Okay. But like I tell you, you need to see the whole fish and get it real small. Sardines are probably some of the best because uh, they're very, very small. And uh, I, I can't see having this problem. Uh, the, uh, the, the fisheries told me I was the only one for the year that had gotten it. But I went on the internet and found out that uh, probably 10 times to 20 times the people get it that uh, say they, uh, uh, there's 10 times, 20 times more people that got it, that the public doesn't, doesn't get notification that, that they had it. Okay. They just don't, they don't go back like I did to the fisheries and, and find out, you know, what is this? Of course, when I went back to the fisheries and I, the second time after he had told me it was Cigaterra, I told him about all this burning, uh, cold felt hot, hot felt cold. And he said, you got Cigaterra. He says, I told you the, the last time when you were here. So I didn't pick up on that. I thought I had Scumberoy, uh fish poison, but he was right. I mean, this is basically what I've got. But again, like I'm telling you, you're better off uh, if you're going to do it in the Caribbean and, and buy the seafood. Uh, I would stay off shellfish of all kinds and uh, stick only with real small fish. And even if you're not in the Caribbean, I would tell you to stick with real small fish if, you, if you're absolutely going to assist in doing it. But I'm going to tell you something. Those fish, you can't keep fish from eating on reefs with cigarette poisoning. But it doesn't exist as much in the colder climates because uh, evidently it's warm water, uh, warm water all year round where you, you see this more than, uh, than you don't in uh, places like, uh, I grew up in North Carolina. If you look in places that's cold, where the water's cold uh, most of the year, or you go to places like Canada a, would be a great place to order seafood if you're getting it. But the colder the better because the uh, cigarettera can't uh, last as long. Uh, it, it, it just can't function in a, a cold climate. Anyway, folks, if you want to uh, know more on this, go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com and just ask for some help. And I would like to hear from you. If you got a question or comment, put it below. And if you want to legally get your income taxes at zero, how to get a second passport as quick as four to eight months, uh, go to our website and we'd be glad to help you from there. And I look forward to talking to you on the next video. Take care.